الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My dear brothers and sisters in Islam On this blessed day of Jumu'ah I greet you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh And I truly pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you and all your loved ones and family members with all the meanings that this salam could possibly hold It is a greeting which Allah has referred to as Mubaraka and Tayyiba blessed and pure and therefore i pray for all that barakah and for all that purity to to be part of your life and your livelihood and your spirituality so i would like to discuss a very interesting topic and it's actually the last it was supposed to be part of the last lesson of the first book but it's going to be now the last lesson of the first book and in Arabic, we have a very interesting phenomena. When something, or in Arab tradition, when something is very important, very significant, or something that is uh, considered great, or you know, any kind of status accorded to it or afforded to it, it is given a number of names. Excuse me, it's given a number of names. For instance, a sword in Arabic has hundreds of names. A uh, lion has quite got a number of names. Camels have hundreds of names. But this is because it is so significant in the life of an Arab, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, if you understood, 99 names is not the total limit of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is just mentioned in a narration, not a very authentic narration, but a narration nonetheless, in which... It's reported that whoever remembers these 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or Allah has 99 names. In Africa, you say, under, under, amongst others, Allah has 99 names. And uh, whoever memorizes them, you know, he will enter Jannah, or he will be forgiven, or I can't remember the, the wording of the narration. Um, same thing with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The scholars have also mentioned 99 names for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because he's the most important figure in the history of mankind after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright? And like that, Jannah has got a number of names in the Quran. Jahannam has been given a number of names in the Quran. The day of Qiyamah has been given so many names in the Quran. Why? Because they are very, very significant things. Jannah, Jahannam, very significant places. Whoever goes to either of them is going to be there for a very long time. And we pray that Allah grants us Jannah without reckoning. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Um, but same thing with the day of Qiyamah. We're going to be standing for a very, very long time. And uh, that's why it's been given so many other Yawmul Hisab, Yawmul, um, Yawmul Taghabun, Yawmul Qiyamah, Yawmul Hashr, all these different names for the day of Qiyamah. But interestingly enough, you can understand the importance and significance of the city Medina Munawwara from the fact that the scholars, great scholars like Alama Zamakhshari and so many scholars of, of hadith and uh, of history have literally counted about a hundred names for the city of Medina. Now, let's just understand why Medina is so important in the life of a believer. Oh, having said that, you know this green shawl that we wear, right? There are a number of reasons why the pious people wear the green shawl. Firstly, there was a tradition of passing on the shawl, the mantle of Tasawwuf, and it happened to be green. Others contend, like the ulama of Yemen, that this was the scarf that they found. The Sahaba anhum wearing a green scarf, not necessarily this color green and this color pat, this kind of pattern, but green. So they say that the more green it is, the more so the closer you are to wearing the shawls like the Sahaba anhum used to wear, there's also a narration that says, look upon green. And I'm going to take it a step further. When I asked my teachers, why do the scholars, some of them wear the green shawl? They said, it's because the white kurta is supposed to be indicative of what you, how you need to keep your heart. And this green shawl is supposed to remind you of the green dome in Medina Munawwara, which reminds you of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to remind you of the sunnah, and how you're going to keep your heart clean and your life clean. May Allah give us the faith and understand. These are all the little, you know, the masala that the, that the uh, Sufis add to, 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 to make the bitter pull of spiritual reformation easier for us to swallow. Understand? Otherwise, to wear a kurta is not a very easy thing necessarily. 
walk around with a shawl and it's not necessarily an easy thing. A turban, I should be wearing a turban. May Allah have mercy on me. I used to I used to wear a turban every day. I just became lazy. La ilaha illallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I did find my miswak though. So I'm very, very excited that I get to use my miswak again. Alhamdulillah. It's great sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Having said that, back to the topic, right? Medina Munawwara was very significant in the life of a believer. Why is it so significant? Number one, it is because it is a city that has so many names, right? And it would only have been given that many names because of its value in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, its value in the sight of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most fav- famous names of Medina are number one, Yathrib, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran itself, Yathrib. That was the name long before the advent of, of Islam. It was always known as Yathrib in the Arabian Peninsula. However, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated there, he once said that whoever calls it Yathrib, then he, must, he should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is Taba, it is Taba, it is Taba. Meaning it is a place that is absolutely pure. It's beautiful, it's flourishing, it's, it's Taba. Taba means something that is pure. It's a place of purity. It's a pure, good place, a religious, spiritual place. So he named it Taba. It's also been called Tayyiba, right? And the last one that we all know is al Madina. So it is so significant because Arabic, in Arabic, the word Medina means city. Okay, it's called city. So because it was referred to as Medina in the Quran, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam referred to as Al Medina in in, in uh, the Hadith. So it has now become synonymous to a name, right? And when you say I'm going to Medina, nobody thinks of to another place. Whereas in Arabic. I'm going to the city. It could have had another meaning even in Arabic, but it has become so significant that in Arabic, wherever you go, you say, oh, I'm, go- I'm going to Medina. Where are you going, brother? I'm going to Medina. Nobody thinks uh, which city. Everyone goes, oh, Medina. You understand? Umrah, Masha, um, oh, Hajj. Everyone says Medina. Right? So, the second reason why Medina is so significant is because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved Medina. Narrations with regards to how much he loved Medina Munawwara, and he made special du'a for Medina Munawwara. There was a, a situation where there was a plague in Medina, and uh, not a plague. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. It, the, the Medina Yathrib was known for its fever, and everybody used to get fever and be weak and sickly there, right? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua that it must be taken away to Juhfa. And it's gone to Juhfa. Like if you sleep over in Juhfa, you're going to get a fever. For sure, you'll become sick, you'll have a fever and you'll be stuck at Right? But not in Medina anymore. Okay? Also, it has been specifically protected from Dajjal, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks that Dajjal won't be able to enter Medina. And there are, there are angels deputed at the entrances of Medina and Dajjal and his army won't be able to come through. Um, there's so many virtues of living patiently in Medina with regards to... Um, you know, the rewards you get first, or apart from the fact that you get 50,000 times the reward performing Salah in the Masjid, right? If you die in Medina, you get buried in Jannatul Baqi'ah. Guaranteed Rasulullah Sallallahu will intercede for you. It's a gathering in the place of Iman towards the end of, of time. It, uh, it's been saved from, uh, from plagues and stuff. Like you can't, get, you can't get a plague in Medina. Now you might think, but hang on. COVID, lockdown, Medina also, there's a difference between a pandemic and a plague, okay? A pandemic, everybody can get sick, but it's not like a guarantee you're going to die. But in a plague situation, if you get sick, brother, dig your qabr so long. <laughs> dig your qabr so long. Anyway, we mention these things because as a believer, we should really want to go and meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at his qabr. You know, we should want to... Um, Go for Umrah. We should want to go to the Holy Lands, you know. And and for me to go to, for Umrah to go for Hajj is, you know, especially Hajj being a compulsory ibadah for those who can afford it. You know, it is such an amazing experience for anyone who's gone for Hajj. I haven't, but I love to listen to those who've gone for Hajj and 
everybody comes back with another lesson for your, you to learn and you think to yourself, hey, when I go, I must remember this, hey, when I go, I must remember that. Uh, we talk about climbing over the walls, going back in and then, you no, know, we, we we didn't want to walk all the way around, so we jumped the wall there by Azizia and I'm thinking, wall, oh, Azizia, oof, when I go, I must remember the wall in Azizia, those I'm going to walk all the way around, you know, all these things. So my, having said this, you know, I hope I've, I've inspired a little bit of a spark in our hearts to want to go to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now a, a heartfelt message to my brothers and sisters who were accredited for Hajj and they can't go. I'm feeling really emotional for you. I can't imagine the disappointment. Really, I can't. Um, it's sad to say that you know, when we miss our salah, we don't feel so disappointed. But when we miss, when we can't get to go for our hajj now, we're feeling really, really disappointed. I'm not saying that to, to, to insult anybody. I'm saying for us who get to go to the masjid, who get to read our salah every day, don't take that for granted. It's a very great ibadah in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for those who have now missed the opportunity to go for hajj, there's a very beautiful principle that niyatul mu'min khayrun min amali the intention of a believer is better than his action and i'll tell you simply why you have this good intention that ya allah i'm going to go for hajj and sincerely you say i'm going to spend all my time in ibadah i'm not going to look at one of those cherries from the other countries <laughs> i'm not going to waste money i'm going to make dhikr i'm going to make hajjud i'm going to read all my salah on time i'm going to go for i'm going to my sins forgive me i'm going to stand in arafah make dua from the beginning to the end i'm going to spend in dua we were going taking lists of names that we must go and ask dua for and we were taking lists of what we must go and ask for people you know i want my wrangler so you're going to go stand and ask La ilaha illallah. And now the sad news of, I'm sorry guys, not this year. I really, my heart crumbles for you and I cannot begin to think that how heart, heart sore you may be, how many tears you've cried. But I want you to understand that you made that intention and it was so sincere and I just want to this and I just want to go and make dua and you got the full reward for that because had you gone there, you probably would not have been able to manage to physically do everything you intended. But now you're barred from that. You're heartbroken. Allah will give you that reward. Please do not worry. Allah will give you that reward. And I promise you of all people, of all people who are going for Hajj, the next time you get the chance and you're going for Hajj, I can promise you, you are going to appreciate your Hajj like nobody else on the plains of Arafat. You will appreciate your hunch like nobody else on the plains of Arafat, and you will spend your time like that, inshallah. Please take this opportunity to recognize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take this opportunity to recognize the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Ali radiallahu anhu was, was uh, asked, Kayfa arafta rabbak? How did you recognize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says, عَرَفْتُ رَبِّي بِفَسْخِ الْعَزَائِمِ I recognized my Rabb when all my plans failed. Take this as your opportunity to turn to Allah. And in your heart, taking your despair, you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, I have tried. I've done what I can do. I went for all my classes. I had bought my ihram. I booked. I paid. I everything. And you've decided that not this year. Ya Allah, I don't know what your wisdom is. In me not going this year, but I'm going to take this opportunity to make extra effort, to make myself extra ready for when I get that opportunity, so that I can do it better than what I would have done it now. The next time I get that chance, maybe next time I can go with you. Inshallah, please make dua for me too. La ilaha illallah. But my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we all we all suffer setbacks and disappointments in life. Allah, I'm feeling I'm feeling so so emotional for you. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I want you to remember this, subhanAllah. I want you to remember this beautiful, beautiful lesson that, if I'm not mistaken, it's a hadith. Inna Allah ma'al munkasirati qulubuhum. Allah is with those whose hearts are broken. When your heart is broken and you sit on your musalla and your hand, head is in your hands and your tears are running down your streak, down your cheeks, I want you to, I want you to think about something that go to a loved one, somebody you really, really love, 
and give them a hug. And that feeling that you feel when you're holding someone and their head is next to yours, that closeness, Allah's closer to you than that. Feel that closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your despair. Feel that closeness of Allah. And I want you to think about another very beautiful thing that just came to my heart. And I want you to, to, to um, consider it. That had everything gone your way, and that's for everybody now, but this momentous, really, wallah, momentous loss of not going for Hajj when you were so, so looking forward to it. Would you have made dua to Allah as, with so much feeling, as you are making now? I don't think so. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah knows best, right? But I'm saying, I, I've experienced this in my own life, that when everything goes my way, then I forget Allah. When things go wrong, then I'm the first one on my knees. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to teach us that we must be on our knees when things go our way too. And we must be on our knees when things don't go our way even more. May Allah give you give you afiyah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with solace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replace this loss of not going for hajj with an even big, bigger and even better spiritual gift that will illuminate your heart that would lighten your burden and that would be with you as a lesson for the rest of your life that you could use to inspire other people that you can say into posterity that you know in 2020 i was supposed to go for hunch and uh, that was the year the coronavirus broke out and we couldn't go but i learned this lesson and that lesson and like you were prepared to spend so many days in your ihram brother and sister in islam put your kurta on Put your shawl on and let us work on the rest of our deen now. Hajj, inshallah, that will happen in future. And as I said, Allah will give you the full reward. Don't worry, full reward because you were sincere about going. And then next time you get the opportunity, I promise you, you're going to appreciate it like nobody else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you afiyah. May Allah bless you. And all of us, all of those who didn't get the opportunity to go, maybe they weren't accredited. Those of us who are unable to go at the moment because of financial constraints. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate those constraints and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us all together. First opportunity. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Whatever I have said that is correct is only from Allah and, his, and the barakah of his Rasul and the great benefit I've derived from my teachers. And whatever I have said that is incorrect is only from my nafs and shaitan and me falling prey to his whisperings. And Allah and his Rasul have absolved completely. Jazakum Allah khaira. Please do not forget to support Masjid al Ashiqeen and all the masajid in our area, all the masajid in the world, and whatever causes we can possibly put our contributions towards, let us do so. Many Muslim brothers and sisters, in fact, many people in general are suffering financially, in great difficulty. Instead of wasting our money on takeaways because the takeaways are open, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq that we can spend that money in charity to other people and uh, uplift them and alleviate their difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.